For our math warm-up today, we're going to do a little bit of mystery decimals. So I'm going to give you some clues here in each of these numbers, and I want you to try to figure out if you can figure out the decimal that I am describing. So number one, I have a nine in the tenths place, a seven in the ones place, and a one in the hundredths place. What number am I? Pause your video and write your number down. All right, you should have written down seven and 91 hundredths. Did you get it correct? All right, let's take a look at the second one. I have an eight in the thousandths place, a three in the tens place, a five in the tenths place, and a six in the hundredths place. What number am I? Pause your video, write down what you think. Okay, so let's see if you got this one correct. 30 and 568 thousandths. So what you might have or might not have figured out is if I don't give you a value for a certain place, you'll have to fill that in with a zero. So notice in this one, it said a three in the tens place, but it didn't say anything about the ones place. So I put my three in the tens. I had to put a zero here. We had a five, which was in the tenths with a TH. We had a six in the hundredths, and we had an eight in the thousandths place there. All right, let's take a look at number three. I have a two in the hundreds place, a four in the thousandths place, and a seven in the tenths place. What number am I? Pause your video. So did you get it correct? We have two, zero, zero, decimal point, seven, zero, four, or 200 and 704 thousandths. So our math message today is going to require you to complete SMJ page 182. Now this is the first part of our open response today. So let's take a look at what it's asking you to do. Number one, draw a picture or fold a piece of paper to help you find one third of two fifths. So I want you to think about what did we do in a previous lesson with our fraction of problems? Did we make them into something else? Would that be helpful in figuring out this question? Or could we use the paper folding, like was mentioned before, to solve it as well? So I'm going to have you go ahead and do that one here in just a second. Let's look at number two. Explain how your picture or paper folding represents the problem. So once you solve it, you're going to have to explain how what you did solves the problem. So when you are all finished with your video and with completing this math message today, you are going to discuss with the people in your group what you did and why you did what you did. So our open response today is called sharing breakfast. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. So why are we doing an open response, you might be asking. Well, we need to be able as mathematicians to make sense of problems and persevere, that means we don't give up in solving them. We also need to be able to reason abstractly and quantitatively. We need to be able to model with mathematics, meaning showing problems, doing models, drawing pictures, all of those things. How are we going to do that? Well, we first have to be able to make sense of a problem, model the problems using numbers, words, pictures, or other objects, 
use mathematical models or equations, and of course, solutions, because you do need to solve them. So here is the beginning of your open response today. It is called sharing breakfast. Mrs. Dominic brought in a breakfast casserole to celebrate her fifth grade class's good behavior. First, the students in group A served themselves some of the casserole. Then, the students in group B took some of what was left. The picture above shows how much casserole the class took. Number one, how much of the whole casserole did group B take? Number two, add to the picture or make your own drawing to show how you find or how you found the amount, the whole casserole that B took. Okay, so using that diagram at the top of your page there, we've got the portion that group B took here in the shaded gray area. This was the leftover portion. And this is how much group A took. Boy, they must have been hungry. Looks like they took a lot more than group B. All right, now in your slides today, you're going to have a separate attachment with these pages on it so that you can actually write on them. So I just wanted to introduce the problems to get you started. And now let's look at the second page. So for the second page, we're gonna continue. Number three, write a number sentence that models the amount of the casserole that group B took. And number four, show or explain how you use the picture to solve the problem. So again, you may have to go back and reread each of the questions, look at the diagram, think about what they did, how they did it. Does it relate to anything else that we've done in class that you can use and apply to this problem? Probably. So think about that. And let's summarize. Your goal is to make sense of the problem and not give up when solving it. Also, you wanna be able to use models to solve the problem or problems using models, pictures, words, equations, etc. Go team! See ya!